Hi students, in this video we are going to talk about the types of the random variables. For a given random variable x, the CDF always non-decreasing right continuous function with upper limit 1 and lower limit 0. So in general, CDF may not be continuous, it could be discontinuous due to left discontinuities. Okay? Here, when you take a CDF of the random variable, it may be continuous everywhere or it may be discontinuous. When it is discontinuous, there must be finite or countably many discontinuities which are also jump discontinuities because CDF is non-decreasing function that is monotone increasing function. And the sum of the jump lengths at the discontinuities must be less than or equal to 1 because CDF itself bounded between 0 and 1 because CDF values are what? The probabilities. Probabilities are always between 0 and 1. So the sum of the jump lengths cannot exceed 1. So sum of the jump lengths must be less than or equal to 1. Again, there are two cases here. Sum of the jump lengths may be exactly equal to 1 or strictly less than 1. We are going to use these properties to classify the random variable into three types. Okay. For a given random variable, if the CDF is continuous everywhere, then we are going to call it continuous type random variable. If the CDF is discontinuous with sum of the jump lengths exactly equal to 1, then it is called discrete type random variable. Otherwise, we are going to call it mixture type random variable. Okay. Let me show you examples of CDF for each type. Okay. Here, the three graphs that you see here are examples of CDFs. Okay. The first one is continuous everywhere. So the corresponding random variable is going to be continuous type. The second one is not continuous, it having four discontinuities and sum of the jump lengths at those discontinuities exactly equal to 1. So a corresponding random variable is going to be discrete type. Okay. In the third one, which is again not continuous, having only one discontinuity, but jump length at that discontinuity strictly less than 1. So, the corresponding random variable is going to be mixture type. Okay. In this course, we study only discrete type and continuous type. Okay. We don't study mixture type random variables. First, let me define what is discrete type random variable. Okay. Definition. A random variable exists yet to be of discrete type if its CDF has Countably many discontinuities, that is, finite or countably infinite discontinuities with sum of jump lengths at point of discontinuities exactly equal to 1. This is the definition of discrete type random variable. For a discrete type random variable x, there exists a countable set Sx which is going to consisting of precisely set of discontinuities of the CDF of x such that probability of x equal to x, we know that is f of x minus f of x minus going to be positive for all x belongs to sx. The reason is this sx consisting of all discontinuities of the CDF, okay, those discontinuities must be due to left discontinuity. That means left hand limit at x must be different from function value at x. And since f is non-decreasing, function value at x must be bigger than left hand limit at x. That's why this is going to be positive for all x belongs to sx. And we can also see that this f of x same as f of x plus. Okay, because CDF is right continuous function, right? So the right hand limit at x is going to be same as function value at x. So, difference between right hand limit and left hand limit is precisely going to be jump length at x. Jump length at x. 
right? And by the definition of the discrete random variable, the sum of the jump lengths over this S x is going to be exactly equal to 1. These jump lengths are precisely property of x taking the value x and x varying over S x which consisting of set of discontinuities of the CDA of, of x, okay? And this set S x is called support of the random variable x, okay? Next. Note, for a discrete random variable x with support Sx, the probability of x take the value within Sx is going to be 1, the probability of x take the value outside Sx is going to be 0. So for any bullet set B, the probability of B under Px is going to be same as probability of B intersection Sx under Px. For a discrete random variable, we know that Sx is either finite or countable infinite. So B intersection Sx is also going to be either finite or countable infinite. So this can be expressed as either finite in and of single terms or countable in and of single terms. In either case, we can write this one as sum of the probability of X take the value A where A varying over B intersection Sx. So this probability distribution Px will be completely determined once we know the probability of x equal to a values for all a belongs to sx, where sx is either finite or countably infinite. And also, we can get this CDF like this, f of x equal to sum of the probability of x equal to a, where a varying over sx with a less than or equal to x, for all x belongs to r, okay? So, for a discrete type random variables, Knowing this countably many probabilities will completely decide the probability distribution. Okay, this defines an important function related to discrete type random variable is called probability mass function. Okay, so next we are going to see definition of probability mass function. Definition, let x be a discrete type random variable which support Sx, then the function P sub x from R to R defined like this. P sub x value at A is going to be probability of x take the value A for A belongs to Sx, 0 otherwise. Okay, so this is called probability mass function of the random variable x. We simply call PMF. Okay, knowing this PMF means knowing all these probabilities over Sx. Okay, that's what we need to decide the complete probability distribution in the discrete case. So, PMF of the discrete random variable will completely determine the probability distribution, okay? Next, let us look at an example, okay? In a random experiment of tossing a fair kind three times, the sample space will be this, consisting of eight possible outcomes like this. Let us be interested in number of heads. Here, X denote the number of heads then x take the value 0, 1, 2, 3, okay? First, let us try to find CDF of the random variable x, okay? For x less than 0, this event x less than or equal to x is consisting of all outcomes in sample space for which the number of x less than or equal to x, okay? Here, x negative, number of x will never be negative, so there is no outcome that we can include here, so it's going to be empty event. That's why the probability of x less than or equal to x is going to be probability of empty set, which is 0. So therefore, the serial of value at x is going to be 0. For 0 less than or equal to x less than 1, this x less than or equal to x, that is number of x less than or equal to x, will consisting of only this outcome, tail, tail, tail. So, the probability of x less than or equal to x is going to be probability of this event, which is going to be 1 by 8. So, therefore, for 0 less than or equal to x less than 1, CD of value is going to be 1 by 8. For 1 less than or equal to x less than 2, the number of x less than or equal to x means that will consisting of out outcomes, these 4, okay. In each outcome, you can see that the number of x less than or equal to x, where x is between 
1 and 2 including 1 excluding 2 okay so the probability of x less than or equal to x is going to be probability of this event which is going to be 4 by 8 okay that is 1 by 2 so that is cdf value at x is going to be 1 by 2 okay next for 2 less than or equal to x less than 3 x less than or equal to x that is number of x less than or equal to x will consisting of all outcomes except all three heads okay which are 7 so the probability of x less than or equal to x is going to be probability of this event which is 7 by 8 so cdf value at x f of x is going to be 7 by 8 when 2 less than or equal to x less than 3 okay so fine next for x greater than or equal to 3 probability of x less than or equal to x the number of heads less than or equal to x for every outcome number of heads will be less than or equal to x when x greater than or equal to 3 that's why this consisting of all outcomes that's why this event is going to be all sample space so the probability of x less than or equal to x is going to be probability of all sample space omega which is 1 therefore the cd of value going to be 1 for all x greater than or equal to 3. So, this is our CDF. f of x equal 0 when x less than 0. f of x equal 1 by 8 when 0 less than or equal to x less than 1. f of x equal 1 by 2 when 1 less than or equal to x less than 2. f of x equal 7 by 8 when 2 less than or equal to x less than 3 and 1 when x greater than or equal to 3 ok let's sketch the graph of this cdf as you can see the graph is step function having only 4 discontinuities 0 1 2 3 which are precisely the values taken by x right ok now we know that the probability of x take the value 0 going to be jump length at 0 probability of x take the value 1 going to be jump length at 1 probability of x take the value 2 going to be jump length at 2 and probability of x take the value 3 going to be jump length at 3 ok so let's calculate the probability of x equal 0 probability of x equal to 1 probability of x equal to and probability of x equal to 3 so that we can write pmf of the random variable x ok so now the support of the random variable x is going to be consisting of set of discontinuities that are 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, the probability of x equal 0 is going to be jump length at 0. The probability of x equal to 1 is going to be jump length at 1. The probability of x equal to 2 is going to be jump length at 2. The probability of x equal to 3 is going to be jump length at 3. Okay. So, now... The probability of x equal 0, jump length at 0 going to be 1 by 8 minus 0, which is 1 by 8. This can be expressed as 3 to 0 times 1 by 2 cube. Probability of x equal to 1, jump length at 1, which is f of 1 minus f of 1 minus, okay, which is going to be 3 by 8. This can be expressed as 3 to 1 times 1 by 2 cube probability of x equal to jump length at 2 which is going to be 3 by 8 this can be expressed as 3 choose 2 times 1 by 2 cube now probability of x equal 3 jump length at 3 which is going to be 1 by 8 this can be expressed as 3 choose 3 times 1 by 2 cube okay so therefore the pmf function Okay, the P of x is going to be 3 choose x 1 by 2 cube for x equal 0, 1, 2, 3 and 0 otherwise. Fine. So, if I draw the bar diagram for this PMF, it is going to be like this. At 0, at 1, the PMF values are 1 by 8. Okay. At 1 and 2, the PMF values are 3 by 8. So, this is the bar diagram for this PMF function. Fine. Properties of the probability mass function. First of all, this PMF is a non-negative function. Positive over the support and zero outside the support. 
and sum of the PMF values or the support equal to one. Okay, these are the two properties of the PMF. Later we are going to see a theorem that these two properties actually completely characterize the probability mass functions. Okay, next and for any Borel set B, the probability of B under P X going to be sum of the PMF values over B intersection S X. Okay, this is how we can get probability of any Borel sets once we know the PMF values over the support. Fine. We can also get the CDF. Okay, and CDF value at X that f of X equal to summation P X of A where a vary over sx with a less than or equal to x. Okay, this is how we can also get cd of in terms of the PMF values. Of course, we can also get the PMF values in terms of the cd of. We know that px of a same as probability of x equal to a. Okay, and which is jump length at a, which is going to be f of a minus f of a minus. Okay, now for given PMF, we can get the CDF and vice versa. Okay, these are the relations. Okay, fine. Next theorem Suppose S B a non empty countable subset of real numbers and G is a function from R to R satisfying two conditions. The first one is G is positive over S outside 0, and second one is sum of the g values over s exactly equal to 1 then g will be pmf for some random variable okay i'm going to give a outline here okay now so let us look at the measurable space r with the borel sigma field now define a probability function p from borel sigma field to r like this p of b defined like this summation of g of x values where x varying over b intersection s okay one can easily verify that this p will be a probability function that means you can check three axioms axiom one and two and three okay so now that means you have a probability space r borel sigma field and p okay now on this probability space we define a random variable x okay x is a function from this is like your omega function from omega to this is omega to r okay the mapping is this x map to x okay so so now this will give a probability distribution function px will be exactly same as p okay so the induced probability space again going to be kind of same okay the px actually same as this p for this distribution of the random variable x we can verify that support of x going to be exactly equal to s and and the probability of x take the value x going to be same as g of x so that is Therefore, G is PMF of the random variable X. Okay, so this is how any function satisfying these two properties will be a probability mass function for some random variable X. Okay, next problem. A random variable x has the CDF f of x equal to 0 for x less than 2, 2 by 3 for 2 less than or equal to x less than 5, 7 minus 6k by 6 for 5 less than or equal to x less than 9, 3k square minus 6k plus 7 by 6 for 9 less than or equal to x less than 14. 16k square minus 16k plus 19 by 16 for 14 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 20 1 for x bigger than 20 okay where k is the real number so there are three questions first one find k second show that x is discrete type and find its support and third one find out the pmf of x 
okay now let us try to find k so that this f actually becomes cdf we know cdf should have certain properties we know that cdf should be non decreasing right continuous function with upper limit 1 lower limit 0 let us try to use these properties to figure out the k value okay first of all f should be non decreasing right for that at 5 the left hand limit at 5 must be less than or equal to right hand limit at 5 which must be same as function value at 5 because cdf must be right continuous okay so left hand limit at 5 if you approach 5 from left hand side the left hand limit is 2 by 3 which must be less than or equal to function value at 5 which is 7 minus 6k by 6 okay this is 1 and also from right continuity at 20 we must have a right continuity and uh, at 20 the function value is this and right hand limit is this these two must be same let's try to use these two things to figure out the k value okay so f of 20 must be same as f of 20 plus okay f of 20 value is 16 k square minus 16 k plus 19 by 16 and the right hand limit at 20 is going to be 1 so if you simplify this you will end up with a quadratic equation if you solve this you will get a 2 k values k equal to 1 by 4 k equal to 3 by 4 question is which one to pick okay let's try to use other properties okay we also should have f of 5 minus should be less than or equal to f of 5 plus which is same as function value at 5 okay so left hand limit at 5 must be less than or equal to function value at 5 and we already seen that the left hand limit at 5 is 2 by 3 which must be less than or equal to function value at 5 which is 7 minus 6k by 6 okay so if you simplify this you will see that k must be less than or equal to 1 by 2 so therefore we go ahead with a k equal to 1 by 4 okay fine now if we plug in this k equal to 1 by 4 in our cdf then it will become this okay so f of x equal 0 for x less than 2 2 by 3 for 2 less than or equal to x less than 5 11 by 12 for 5 less than or equal to x less than 9 91 by 96 for 9 less than or equal to x less than 14 okay and 1 for x less than or equal to 14 okay this is going to be our cdf okay so now you can clearly see that this is going to be discontinuous function and discontinuity is at 2 5 9 14 okay and some of the jump length also will be add up to 1 that I can show you from figure. This is the graph of the CDF which having 4 discontinuities at 2 and 5 and 9 and 14. These are the discontinuities and jump lengths at these discontinuities exactly add up to 1. Okay. So, so that's why this is going to be discrete type random variable with the support is what 2, 5, 9, 14. Okay. So, x is discrete type random variable with support consisting of discontinuities 2, 5, 9, 14. Okay. So, next, let us try to find the PMF. Okay. So, probability of x equal to is going to be what? Jump length at 2 going to be 2 by 3 minus 0. You can see that from uh, CDF which is going to be 2 by 3. And probability of x equal to 5, jump length at 5, f of 5 minus f of 5 minus. Okay. Function value at 5 going to be 11 by 12. Left hand limit at 5 going to be 2 by 3. The difference is going to be 1 by 4. Jump length at 5 going to be 1 by 4. And similarly, 
probability of x equal to 9, jump length at 9 going to be 1 by 32. The probability of x equal to 14, jump length at 14 going to be 5 by 96. Okay. Therefore, the PMF of the random variable x, okay, Px of a going to be what? The probability of x take the value a, right? So, which is going to be 2 by 3 for a equal to 2, 1 by 4 for a equal to 5, 1 by 32 for a equal to 9, 5 by 96 for a equal to 14, okay? 0 otherwise. This is the probability mass function of the random variable x, okay? Next. Now, let me give a definition for continuous type random variable, okay? Here is the definition. A random variable x is said to be of continuous type if its CDF is a continuous function, okay? For a most continuous type random variable, there will be a non-negative function small f such that the CDF capital F is going to be integral of the small f over the interval minus infinity to x. That is the capital F of x equal to integral from minus infinity to x f of t dt. Okay. That is with this relation there will be a non-negative function small f that will be called probability density function of the random variable x. We simply call it PDF. Okay. Here in this expression you see that whenever the small f is continuous then the capital F will be differentiable by first fundamental theorem of capital F. Not only that, the derivative of the capital F is going to be small f. Okay. So, if f of x is also continuous function, then the derivative of the left hand side capital F is going to be the small f. Okay. This is how we can also get PDF from CDF. Okay, if you have a knowledge of PDF, then you can obtain CDF of the random variable like this. Integrating PDF over the interval from minus infinity to x. Okay, also, if you have a knowledge of CDF and if you want a PDF, then you can differentiate CDF to obtain PDF. Okay, so this is how you can go from one to other. If you know the PDF, you can find out CDF if you know the CDF, you can find out the PDF. These are the relations between these two. Okay. Now, the support of the random variable x in this case defined like this. All real numbers for which the PDF values are positive. This is support of the random variable x. Okay. Next. Theorem. For a continuous random variable x with a PD of small f, the probability of a less than x less than or equal to b same as, probability of a less than or equal to x less than b same as, probability of a less than x less than b same as, probability of a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b equal to integral a to b f of t dt. So, all these probabilities will be same anyway we know and that also equal to integral a to b f of t dt. Okay. For continuous random variable we know that CDF is continuous right. Okay. In particular the CDF will be continuous at a and b. So, we know that from previous result all these probabilities equal to f of b minus f of b. So, capital F will be continuous at A and B. So, we should have the all these probabilities equal to F of B minus F of U. Okay. Now, we know that the capital F of X in terms of the PDF is what? Minus infinity to X F of T dt. Okay. So, so we can replace F of B with the integral minus infinity to b f of t dt. You can replace f of a with the integral minus infinity to a f of t dt. Okay. Now, let us break down this red integral into two parts. Minus infinity to a f of t dt plus a to b f of t dt. Okay. Because here a less than b, right? So, we can break this integral into two parts like this. Now, this brown integrals both are same, they get cancelled. Now you end up with integral a to b f of t dt. 
okay so this is how we can obtain the probability of x sitting in the interval kb simply integrating the pdf over the interval kb okay so we can also use pdf to calculate these probabilities okay earlier we used cdf to calculate these probabilities now if you have a pdf at your disposal you can also use it to find out these probabilities simply integrating it okay only thing is you should know how to integrate some basic functions fine note since pdf is non negative the integral of the pdf can be interpreted as area under the curve so the probability of x sitting in the interval ab can be interpreted as area under the curve f of x over the interval ab okay in this figure the shaded portion is area under the curve from the interval ab so it's going to be probability of a less than x less than b whether we include end points or not it's going to be same so like this okay or probability of all these intervals going to be same as area under the curve f from the interval ab okay now what should be the total area under the pdf curve okay to get the total area under the pdf curve we have to integrate from minus infinity to infinity let's take the integration from minus infinity to infinity integral from minus infinity to infinity f of t dt which is improper integral so this integral going to be limit of this integral okay limit x tends to infinity minus infinity to x f of t dt and this is precisely the cd of value at x okay so that means we have limit x tends to infinity capital f of x this is limit of capital f at infinity which is upper limit of the cd of we know that equal to 1 therefore the total area under the pdf curve f of x equal to 1 okay so fine now properties of pdf there are two properties of pdf that will completely characterize the probability density functions of continuous random variables okay the first one is the pdf always non negative function and second one is total area under the pdf curve equal to 1 these two properties completely characterize probability density functions because in advanced course on probability theory one can show that the function satisfying this one and two then it will be a pdf for some random variable x okay fine next now note here for x not in support of x we know that the pdf value will be strictly positive okay question is what it represent in the discrete case when we have a pmf okay if x not in the support of x then the px of x not will be the probability of x take the value x not can we give the same interpretation here no because in the continuous case the probability of x take the value x not will be zero always so f of x not cannot be the probability of x take the value x not okay now then what is the pdf value at x not okay so anyway we never ask like you know what is the probability of x take the value x not the our interest will be what is the probability x will be near x not if i pick a random student in a class if x denote the weight of the student in kgs then what is the probability x take the value 50 So when I say x equal 50, I mean exactly 50 kg. Okay, not even one gram more, one gram less. It should be exactly 50 kg. It's very unlikely, right? So we never be interested in such a thing. Rather, we will be interested in what is the probability the random student weight will be near 50 kg. 
okay maybe like you know with a 1 gram tolerance or 10 grams tolerance or 100 gram tolerance whatever our interest may be the epsilon tolerance okay so in general our interest may be so here our interest will be what is the probability x will be near x naught that means what is the probability x sitting in the interval x naught minus epsilon by 2 x naught plus epsilon by 2 where epsilon by 2 is the tolerance that we can be at okay so this probability see here this is nothing but a this is nothing but b simply the probability of x sitting in the interval with end point x naught minus epsilon by 2 to x naught plus epsilon by 2 what we do we simply integrate the pdf okay so integrate the pdf from x naught minus epsilon by 2 to x naught plus epsilon by 2 what we get is a area under the curve area under f from the, over the interval x naught minus epsilon by 2 to x naught plus epsilon by 2 okay this will be approximately equal to this rectangle area this is the rectangle with the base epsilon and height f of x naught okay so this will be pretty close to when epsilon is very small this will be pretty close to this area under the curve so the probability of x near x naught with the epsilon by 2 tolerance is equal to f of x naught time epsilon so this f of x naught will be some kind of measure of you know how likely the random variable x will be near x naught okay okay so it's not exactly probability but the probability of interest you know can be obtained something like this so here f of x naught measure of how likely the random variable x will be near x naught okay that is the meaning of the pdf value at particular point in the support okay fine let x be a continuous random variable with a pdf small f and for any borel set b the probability of b under px that is probability of x sitting in the borel set b can be obtained simply integrating pdf over the borel set b so technically we can compute the probability of any borel set simply integrating the pdf over the borel set once we have access to this pdf okay so we can see that this pdf will completely determine the probability distribution of the random variable x so we can also study the probability distribution of continuous random variable x through study of its pdf now let us consider a random experiment of selecting a point from interior of unit circle okay the sample space omega going to consisting of all points a b in plane such that a square plus b square less than one okay now for any event a which is subset of omega the reasonable probability function going to be this the probability of a going to be area of a by pi the reason this particular probability function makes sense is the following okay as we select the point at random we expect the probability of selected point come from the region a should be proportional to the area of the region okay that is the probability of selected point come from the region a should be c times area of a where c is the proportional constant okay in particular probability of omega should be c times area of omega and we know that area of the interior of unit circle going to be pi times 1 square which is c pi and we also know that from axiom 2 the probability of whole sample space must be 1 so 1 equal to c pi that implies c must be equal to 1 by pi so the proportional constant is 1 by pi so area of a by pi okay that's why this perfectly makes sense here fine now now let us define a random variable x which denotes the distance from origin to selected point okay 
let x is the function from omega to r the mapping the point a b map to distance from r into the point a b which is going to be under root a square plus b square okay then the range of x going to be closed interval 0 1 the distance can vary from closed 0 to open 1 okay fine now the event x less than r equal to x okay what it means consisting of all outcomes in the sample space for which x omega less than r equal to x here outcomes are points a b for which distance from 0 0 point to a b less than r equal to x the distance from 0 0 to a b is going to be under root a square plus b square so x less than r equal to x is going to be precisely consisting of these points okay now now let us find the cdf of the random variable x okay cdf of x for x less than 0 the probability of x less than r equal to x is going to be 0 because no matter what point we select distance from origin to that point will not be negative right so that's why so x less than r equal to x is going to be empty so the probability of empty set is going to be 0 that's why the CDF value at x is going to be 0 for x less than 0. For 0 less than r equal to x less than 1, the probability of x less than r equal to x. Here x less than r equal to x is going to consisting of all points from this shaded portion. Okay. With the radius x. Okay. This is the interior of the circle with the radius x. Okay. Now, so the area of that region going to be pi x square that's why the probability of x less than r equal to x going to be area of that region pi x square by pi so pi pi cancel you end up with x square okay now for x greater than r equal to 1 the x less than r equal to x going to be all sample space because for any point in the sample space distance from origin to that point is less than 1 so x less than r equal to x will include every point in the sample space that's why the probability of omega going to be 1 so that's why cd of value at x going to be 1 for x greater than r equal to 1 fine now we got a cdf f of x equal to 0 when x less than 0 x square for 0 less than r equal to x less than 1 1 for x greater than r equal to 1 okay let me show you the graph of this CDF as you can see it is a continuous function. Okay. Now we can get the PDF of the random variable x from the CDF simply by differentiating the CDF, right? So PDF of the random variable x small f going to be derivative of the capital F. So as you can see that outside 0, 1, the function is constant. So so the derivative going to be 0. So in between 0 and 1, derivative of x square is 2x. So the PDF small f of x going to be 2x for 0 less than or equal to x less than 1, 0 otherwise. Okay. Fine. Now, now let's try to answer a simple question. The probability of selected point fall in the ring with a ready 1 by 4 and 1 by 2. That is, what is the probability? selected point come from this portion okay if you want the selected point to come from this portion the distance between origin to that point should be between 1 by 4 and 1 by 2 that is we are precisely interested in probability of 1 by 4 less than x less than 1 by 2 okay so let us try to compute this probability using the pdf what is the pdf fx of x equal to 2x for 0 less than or equal to x less than 1 0 otherwise we already computed in previous slide now the probability of this event going to be what integration from 1 by 4 to 1 by 2 the pdf okay dt between 1 by 4 to 1 by 2 the pdf value going to be here 
2 t dt okay so the probability of 1 by 4 less than x less than 1 by 2 going to be integral 1 by 4 to 1 by 2 2 t dt okay integral of 2 t going to be t square now if you apply limits 1 by 4 to 1 by 2 it's going to be 1 by 4 minus 1 by 16 it's going to be 4 minus 1 by 16 which will be 3 by 16 fine so the probability of selected point fall in the ring with a ready 1 by 4 and 1 by 2 is going to be 3 by 16 okay fine problem let x be the time in seconds between incoming telephone calls at busy switchboard suppose that a reasonable probability model for x is given by pdf f of x equal to 1 by 4 t power minus x by 4 for 0 less than x less than infinity 0 otherwise then find the probability that time between successive phone calls exceeds 4 seconds that is we are interested in probability of x bigger than 4 okay we can compute the probability of x bigger than 4 using pdf integrating pdf from 4 to infinity right now from 4 to infinity the pdf value is 1 by 4 t power minus x by 4 so our integrand is going to be 1 by 4 e power minus x by 4 with limits 4 to infinity so we have to integrate this one now let us take the substitution t equal to x by 4 so t equal to x by 4 then dt will be dx by 4 okay now as x vary from 4 to infinity with this relation t vary from 1 to infinity right so probability of x bigger than 4 going to be limits 1 to infinity t limits dx by 4 we can replace with dt okay so x by 4 we are replacing with t dx by 4 we are replacing with dt so we have to integrate this e power minus t with the limits 1 to infinity okay fine next now the integral of e power minus t with the limits 1 to infinity is going to be limit x tends to infinity integral 1 to x e power minus t dt okay so e power minus t integral going to be minus e power minus t okay with the limits 1 to x and limit x go to infinity okay so it's going to be limit x go to infinity if you substitute the thing we will get e power minus x minus e power minus 1 so it's going to be limit x tends to infinity e power minus 1 e power minus 6 okay so as x go to infinity e power minus 1 will be remain e power minus 1 but e power minus x go to 0 so the limit going to be 1 by e okay so therefore the probability of x bigger than 4 going to be 1 by e okay this is the answer fine problem the lifetime in hours of certain kind of radio to be the random variable x with a pdf f of x equal to 0 for x less than or equal to 100 100 by x square for x bigger than 100 okay what is the probability that exactly two of five such a tubes in a radio set will have to be replaced within first 150 hours of operation that is what is the probability exactly two out of the five tubes will fail in first 150 hours of operation that's the question okay so first let ai be the event that i the tube in a radio set will have to be replaced within first 150 hours of operation okay so for i equal to 1 2 3 4 5 there are five tubes in a radio set okay here the probability of ai going to be the probability of x less than 150 ai happening means what i the tube life is less than 150 hours okay that means 
So probability of Ki is going to be probability of x less than 150. So this probability can be computed by integrating from minus infinity to 150 the PDF. Okay. And this we can break into two parts minus infinity to 100 and 100 to 150. Okay, so and when x less than or equal to 100, the PDF is 0, so minus infinity to 100, the PDF is 0, the integrand is 0, and here 100 to 150, we have to use the integrand 100 by x square. Okay, so, so this is going to be 0, so only we have to work with this. So, so integral of 100 by x square going to be minus 100 by x with the limits 100 to 150. So it's going to be minus 100 by 150 minus 100 by 100. It's going to be minus 2 by 3 by minus 1 which is going to be 1 by 3. So the probability of a i going to be 1 by 3 for all i equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, so the probability of a i we just computed 1 by 3 for i equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So therefore probability of a i equal to 1 by 3 that implies probability of a i complement going to be 2 by 3 for i equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Now, now let y be the random variable which denotes the number of tubes that fails in first 150 hours of operation out of 5 tubes in a radius set. Okay. Then y takes the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We are interested in probability of y equal to 2. What is the probability exactly 2 of the 5 tubes failing within 150 hours of operation. Okay. So, now this probability of y equal to can be expressed as sum of the probabilities of these events where summation varying over all divisions of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into two groups of size 2 and size 3. Let me describe what this event is. AI1 intersection AI2 means I1 tube and I2 tube fails within first 150 hours of operation, intersection AI3 complement, intersection AI4 complement, intersection AI5 complement means I3, I4, I5 tubes do not fail within first 150 hours of operation. That means exactly two fails that are I1 and I2 and I3, I4, I5 do not fail. Here I1, I2, I3, I4 varying over these divisions. Okay. Now it is reasonable to assume that lives of these tubes are independent. So now we can assume AI1, AI2, AI3 complement, AI4 complement and AI5 complement are independent. So this probability we can write product of the probabilities like this. Okay. Probability of AI1, probability of AI2 into probability of AI3 complement into probability of AI4 complement into probability of AI5 complement. These two probabilities are 1 by 3, 1 by 3 and 2 by 3 into 2 by 3 into 2 by 3. So therefore, the probability of y equal to 2 going to be summation, each probability going to be exactly 1 by 3 square times 2 by 3 cube. Okay. And this summation varying over these divisions. Okay. Dividing 5 objects into 2 groups of size 2, size 3. How many ways we can divide like that? 5 factorial by 2 factorial 3 factorial which is nothing but 5 choose 2. Therefore, the probability of y equal to 1 to be 5 choose 2 times 1 by 3 square times 2 by 3 cube which will be approximately 0 0.3292. Fine. Okay. Problem. Suppose x is a continuous random variable whose PDF is given by f of x equal to k times 4x minus 2x square 
for x between 0 and 2, 0 otherwise. There are two questions here. First, we have to find k, then we have to answer probability of x bigger than 1. Okay. So, to find k, we use the properties of PDF. We know that PDF should be non-negative function and the total area under the PDF curve should be equal to 1. Okay. So, let's find the k value first. Since f is PDF, we know that total area under the PDF curve must be equal to 1. Right. So, this total integration we can break into three parts minus infinity to 0, then 0 to 2, then 2 to infinity. Okay. Now, so Outside 0 to 2 interval, the PDF value is 0. So, here and here integrand is going to be 0. Simply, it is going to be 0 to 2 k times 4x minus 2x square dx. Okay. This total integration must be equal to 1. Okay. Now, if you integrate it k times the integral of 4x minus 2x square is going to be 2x square minus 2x cube by 3, 0 to 2. Okay. So, this must be equal to 1. So, k times, if you apply limits, 2 times 4 minus 2 times 8 by 3 minus 0 minus 0 that must be equal to 1. So, k times, so 24 minus 16 by 3 should be equal to 1. That implies k must be equal to 3 by 8. Okay. So, therefore, the, therefore, the PDF is 3 by 8 times 4x minus 2x square for 0 less than x less than 2, 0 otherwise. Okay. So, that's what we did here. The total integration, we made it equal to 1. So, then we end up with a k value 3 by 8. Okay. Now, if you put the k value in the PDF, so this is our PDF. Okay f of x equal to 3 by 8 times 4x minus 2x square for 0 less than x less than 2, 0 otherwise. Okay. Now, let us try to answer the second question. Okay. That is probability of x bigger than 1. We can write 1 minus probability of x less than or equal to 1. Since probability of e going to be 1 minus probability of e complement. Right. So, now, now, this is going to be 1 minus integration from minus infinity to 1. The PDF is this. Okay. So, 1 minus integration from 0 to 1. The integrand is 3 by 8, 4x minus 2x square dx. Okay. So, it's going to be 1 minus 3 by 8. Integral of 4x minus 2x square going to be 2x square minus 2x cube by 3, 0 to 1 limits, which is going to be 1 minus 3 by 8, 2 times 1 minus 2 times 1 by 3, minus 0 minus 0. It's going to be 1 minus 3 by 8, 2 minus 2 by 3, which is 1 minus 3 by 8, it's going to be 6 minus 2 by 3, so 3, 3 cancel, so it's going to be 1 minus 4 by 8, which is 1 minus 1 by 2, it's going to be 1 by 2. So, therefore, the probability of x bigger than 1 going to be 1 by 2. Okay. 
here is the simplification we did okay therefore the probability of x bigger than 1 is 1 by 2 fine okay let me stop now thank you